Hi, good day. This is episode 2. Still on the OKX bots, and I would walk you through on how to create tags on the OKX bots. So now you're currently logged into the OKX bots software. The first thing to do is to click on these three layers here. This is the menu. Having clicked on it, you have a variety of options. You can clearly see you have a create bot, proxy chain, executable, and other options. I will take up my time to explain what each and every single one of them does. But on this video, we'll start with teaching you how to create a task. To create a task, you need to click on executables. Once you click on executables, you'll be presented with series of options to be able to automate a task. The above here is called a tool or a toolbox. So specifically, there are a lot of tasks you can actually automate on OKEG bots. Each and every single one of them stays in a tool. For instance, we have a browser tool. Within this browser tool, there is a primary task and a secondary task. Now, a primary task is what the bot must do. This is required and this is mandated. A secondary task is optional. This is additional things you would want the bot to do, having executed the primary task. For instance, the primary task on browser tool is visit websites. And this is currently the only primary tax on browser tool. I could say I want to visit a website like let's say a random website. I think I would want to go with many sites. Let's use Jumia. Jumia.com. Now the second phase is to put in how long you would want to spend on a website. This is usually in seconds. You can put in as whatever time you would want. Or should you want to bypass detection systems and want your bots to look as real as possible, it is ideal to put in a time that would actually be close to what a real human being would want to spend on a website. I think a minimum of a minute should be fine. But for the sake of testing this video, as I would want you to see how this works as fast as possible, I'm only going to put in 10 to 15. The time is usually in seconds, so for 60 seconds, that's a minute, for 120 seconds, that's 2 minutes, and you get the check. Now, on the secondary action, this is where we specify what we would want to click on. So let's say for instance, I want to have Jumia.com open, and I want to click on something specific on Jumia.com. Now this is where I put in what specifically I would want to click on. Let me show you an example. So I'm going to visit a random site called Jumia.com and when this website opens, I would want to click on something different. However, I noticed when I opened Jumia.com, it quickly took me into some other page. So maybe I should just try something else. Let's try CNN.com. It's taking a lot of time to open. Okay, it has definitely open. But I noticed I was redirected. I don't want where I would be redirected. I want where um Okay, this is a Nigeria website. Let's use, say, Ninja Loaded. Okay, let's use, say, Naira Land. Now, the moment this website opens, I will create a couple of tags and I will automate a lot of activities around this website. But creating of tax goes beyond what you see. Firstly, the tax you automate on a desktop might not work on a mobile. So for instance, I'm currently viewing this website as a desktop. But should I want to visit this as a mobile, all I have to do is to click on inspect and click here. After clicking on inspect, first you click on inspect. Then after you click on inspect, you click on this phone icon over here and then you choose from phone or from dimension responsive 
you choose in something like maybe an iPhone 14 Pro Max and then you hit a refresh now you can see the dimension has changed and what was initially overstretched has now been reduced now most websites has like a different layout for their mobile phone and a different layout for their desktop so it is always wise to automate different tasks for different kind of devices iPhone and Android can fall into one category computers which includes Mac um, Linux Windows they can all fall into some other category in a nutshell the screen resolution of the device kind of you know are being grouped together and what works for desktop would not work for mobile so it is always safe to go to inspect and after inspecting you click on this phone and then you choose it into another phone so now we're going to automate something we want to click on so let's say I'm currently on Naira land for instance and I want to click on the auto section so this auto section I would right click it and I'll go to inspect now I've inspected this you can clearly see on this auto section right here is showing autos you can see there is an autos over here now I'm going to click I'm going to um, put my mouse on this autos and I'll right click it and I'll go to copy and I'll go to copy full export now I will head back to the software once again and this time around I will paste the full export there so I have the export that says I should click on Corso on autos rather which is this expert over here has been copied into the okay box now the next thing is to put a duration this simply means that when we click on autos how long would we spend on the page when it loads so you could spend as many time as you would want it is also ideal to make it as realistic as a human would but for the sake of this tutorial I would only put 10 to 15 seconds now I would click on plus here so it adds the S parts and you can see after I clicked on this plus it is now under here now what this simply means is it's going to click on the auto section but if I want it to click on some other thing so let's say it clicks on the autos and after it clicks on the autos I say I want it to for instance click on this Ford Escape I can right click over here to this Ford Escape and on this Ford Escape I can right click and copy again copy the oh, sorry the mouse is switching copy the full S parts head over here paste it and add so what this simply means is that the bot would visit nairaland.com then it opens or it clicks on the auto section which was this first S parts after which it follows up to click on the second S part which is this for the escape and it's going to spend at least within 10 to 15 minutes for each you know one of these clicks so it clicks this one it spends like 10 to 15 seconds um, then it clicks on the second one seconds rather not minutes now at this point in time I can cross check that I have my oh I didn't set this for Ireland so now I can confirm I have my bot tools the tools were set to browser tools on browser tools I selected a task called visit websites um, the tax is basically to visit nairaland.com spend 10 to 15 seconds there after which it should click on autos um, spend 10 to 15 seconds again after which it should click on that for the skip I can now add this to the chain so now this is the action I had already set and this is a chain of action means this chain or this list contains all the tax we're going to be automating so let's say I have this four stacks automated now I would want to automate even more how about I automate a Google search so I can head over to this browser tools and head over to Google tools now I remind do I remind you that I said we have lots of tools on OK but these tools will help you automate virtually anything so for instance we had just automated browser tools which simply means we're able to create a tool using our browser to visit nairaland.com spend 10 to 15 seconds over there and click on a couple of experts now we're heading over to the Google tools and this time around we want to use the Google search so I'm going to come here and I'm going to type in anything so I want to type in something I want the bots to search on Google I want the bots to search on who is Dino Cake now 
this is just to show you an example of what you should search on but should you want to be using this to automate things like um, keywords that would boost your CPC so let's say for instance you have a website your website talks about scholarship talks about um, any niche you can have so many bots keep making Google search around those niches now this will help that whenever this bot visits your website there will be a very high CPC so the way Google works is they show you advertisements based on what they perceive you'd be interested in so let's say for instance I'm into cars I love cars a whole lot whenever I am on Google whenever I am on YouTube I'm going to see lots of YouTube videos related to cars and if you're somebody who is a sucker for let's say gadgets if you visit any website you're going to be seeing advertisements related to gadgets now if you're somebody who probably wants to leave the country and all you do is search about scholarship how to leave the country how to go to UK how to go to Canada you're going to be seeing lots of advertisements related to that niche so in a nutshell Google kind of profiles you they know what you want to see based on what you've been searching for and then they show you advertisements based on what they know you would want to see so Google AdSense pays differently um, based on what the customer sees if for instance I'm somebody who searched for insurance search for scholarship search for high CPC keywords now this simply means that Google knows me as somebody who is interested in a high CPC key niche if I ever visit a website the Google Adsense ads I'll see on that website would majority of the times suit me that means because I searched for that um, insurance or that scholarship I would likely see scholarship related advertisements and for each time I click on them whoever has that website to be making more money more than win somebody who says doesn't google about um, insurance or scholarship and they just google about bag shoes and something that doesn't have high CPC so in a nutshell the quality of your visitors would actually make Google pay you more money because they will be able to profile those people as people who are in a high CPC niche which simply means that you can use your own hands to come up with a whole lot of keywords that this bot will search for on Google and automate it. Now I wouldn't want to go too far, I would want to just use these two tags to explain exactly how this whole thing works. So I'm going to say who is Daniel Kek, so this is what the bot is going to search for on Google and I'll put in how many minutes I want it to stay. So I'm going to put in let's say 30 to 45 seconds. So this simply means that within 30 to 45 seconds the bot would head over to Google, search for who is Daniel Kek, after which it would just click on any random result it says. Now if you want this bot to do something even more sophisticated, you would have to upgrade to a bigger plan. For instance, we have the Google AI search. This is where you can describe what you want the bot to search for. For instance, search for top business opportunities. Now the word you use to tell it to what um, to search for something is not what it uses. So for instance, if you say search for things related to scholarship, the bot itself will use ChatGPT, which is here, to generate a search test, which is it could come up with different tests, but if you don't use AI, it will only search for the exact thing you want it to search. So for instance, on this video I said who is Daniel Kek. This simply means that every single one of the bots would search for who is Daniel Kek specifically. However, if I search with AI, I would only tell it what to search and each bot would come up with a different word. Now I will teach you how to use AI in the future, but for now I've only been able to add two things to my tags. The first one is called visit website and the second one is called um, a Google search on who is Daniel Kek. Now to view what you've done in the past you can click on is edit executables. So if I click on this I'll be able to see the previous tags I had in the past. At the moment I only have one here which is Google. So if you have a free account on OKBot, you can only create one executable uh, which is chain of actions. But if you're on the Pro you can create as many as possible. For instance on the primary Pro you can create up to 10 executables and on the secondary pro you can create up to 25 executable but on the free pro which is what I'm currently using now I can only create um, just one executable so since I already have this one here I would have to delete it first now it's been deleted I would have to save this new one I created and I would call it anything I like let's say latest task and so I, I saved it to the name called latest tax and I can now save. Good. Now I just taught you on how to create a task, which is how to put in 
um, first of all choose a tool you want we use the browser tool we also filled in the form which is the URL we specified the name of the website we also specified how many minutes we would want to spend on that website which in my own case I stated it should spend 10 to 15 seconds on the secondary action here yeah, morning we specified um, how many experts we want to click which was like two and we also said we want it to be within 15 sorry within 10 to 15 seconds then we went over to the Google tools and on the Google tools we did something different we made a Google search the Google search was just to search for who is Daniel Keck and we said it should spend within 30 to 45 seconds making that search when we were done we had saved it as latest task if I click on edit executables you can also see that it is currently there showing as um, latest task Now to refresh this page I can hold control arrow to refresh and after refreshing the page I will head straight again to check those tasks and they should all be done. On the next video I will show you on how to how to execute the tasks you had described so we were able to set up a tax. The first tax was to visit nyaland.com and click on autos and the second tax was to visit Google and make a Google search. At the moment the page is freezing so I kind of um, suspect this should be an issue with my network but I will get this um, resolved before the episode 3. On episode 3 I will be creating bots and then on episode 4 I would create um, uh, I would launch this bots and have them execute the stacks we already created. So see you at episode 3.